Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. My name is Nick Erickson, and this is episode two in our new series of weekly webinars. In last week's episode, John Durkin shared with us just how Instron Service has been handling essential on-site and remote services under the impact of COVID-19. The main takeaway was that Instron is open for business. It might not be business as usual, but we are continuing to design, manufacture, and support our full range of products globally. An important reason why we are still open for business is that Instron is operating as an essential business. This means that our products and service personnel are critical to the quality process in a wide variety of essential industries, such as pharmaceutical, biomedical, transportation, food, paper products, electronics, and really countless others. Uh, today, I'm joined by Anna Wynn, the business unit manager for Instron's low force electromechanical products. This includes our brand new 3400 and 6800 series tabletop frames. Anna's here to share with us some examples of how companies right here in America and across the world are currently using Instron testing systems to help fight this pandemic. Feel free to send in any questions you might have as Anna's presenting. We've got Landon Goldfarb, one of our senior application engineers here ready to field those at the end. And any that we don't get to will be addressed in follow-up emails. With that said, I'm going to turn things over to Anna now. Thank you, Nick, and thank you all for your attendance. I'm excited to be here for Instron's weekly webinar and the second episode. I thought I would start today with a quick story about how Instron became a company. In 1942, the world was in turmoil, not unlike our current state. One of the challenges being contemplated by military organizations around the world was a shortage of silk. Silk was an extremely expensive and difficult to produce material that was used to make parachutes. A company in the United States volunteered their new material as a substitute. The company was DuPont and the material was nylon. Now before this moment, nylon had been used to make ladies stockings and it had successfully replaced the expense of silk. Nylon was touted as having the strength of steel, the sheerness of cobwebs and the luxury feel of silk. DuPont approached the United States government with their idea, and as you can imagine, it was met with skepticism. Replacing ladies' stockings with a new man-made material is one thing. Replacing parachutes responsible for men's lives, altogether a different situation. So the US government contracted the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT, to validate the strength of this new nylon compared to silk. Two bright young engineers, Harold Hindman and George Burr teamed up and developed a new method of material testing, something more repeatable than asking volunteers to step out of planes. Harold and George developed the first closed loop test system with a strain gauged load cell to measure the strength of nylon and silk. This equipment provided data that not only showed that nylon was comparable to silk, but was in fact stronger. And the rest was skydiving history. After saving the skies, Harold and George opened Instron in 1946, and we have been proudly supporting the world's innovations for the past 75 years with our mechanical test systems. Today, we find ourselves again in a world of turmoil, fighting a new kind of battle, a battle where industries and countries are banding together to fight the COVID-19 pandemic. This fight is a combination of using current products and technologies, as well as quickly developing new tools. Both of these tactics require products our healthcare providers, our communities, and you can trust. Instron's material testing equipment is made to deliver trust throughout the design, development, and production pathway. The first step to a new product is often a patent a mechanism to show a concept that solves problems in a new and innovative manner. Pictured here are a few patents that used Instron equipment to demonstrate the feasibility and functionality of new products and materials that are in use today to fight COVID-19. Here we have pictured ventilator tubing patented by Fisher and Packel, and they use the Instron 5560 
test frame to test the load and extension of the tubing used for that ventilator. In the middle, we have 3M's filtering face piece respirator that has an expandable mask body. They use the Instron 4302 model to do the respiratory expansion test. And finally, Honeywell's cut resistant protective glove. We used an Instron machine to determine the tensile modulus of the filaments used to make that glove. Now, believe it or not, the patent is often the easiest step in the process. Next, a manufacturer must demonstrate that their new idea can be designed and manufactured in a manner that is safe, reliable, and solves the designated problem. A global consortium of experts, the International Standards Organization, or ISO, has published guidances that must be adhered to, and data must be provided and prove the compliance submitted to, and submitted to local governing bodies. For example, the FDA requires numerous tests and trials to be submitted before approving a new product for use or sale. These ISO guidelines can be thousands of pages long and include hundreds of tests. Instron's equipment can be used to complete the physical tests required. Here we have an example regarding medical textiles used for gowns and gloves. ISO 13995, 18526, and 2384 include physical tests to characterize the material. Minimum thresholds must be met for approval. Pictured here, we have a figure demonstrating a puncture test, a test required to identify the force at which a textile can be damaged, because it's important that these textiles maintain their integrity during daily use. Other tests include tear tests, peel tests, and many more. Instron's universal testing machines can be fitted with multiple fixtures to accommodate a wide variety of tests on a single system. Respirators and ventilators are made of multiple components and materials. Each piece must be evaluated and documented, and then the entire unit as a whole. The image here indicates all of the connectors and components on a ventilator, which must be evaluated for strength to ensure that the unit is effective on a day-to-day -day basis. If one connector is weak, the risk to the user can be monumental. Once these products are approved for sale, the manufacturer must then ensure the long-term reliability of the manufacturing process and the product through quality assurance testing. These tests are similar to those used in the approval process and are used to monitor the supply chain for changes in raw materials and components, which could alter the quality of the overall product. They're also used to monitor the manufacturing and assembly processes to make sure that they're consistent or that any changes that are made for efficiency don't impact the quality of the product. Instron systems can be used on the manufacturing floor in line with production or in quality assurance labs. Let's walk through a couple of examples pictured here used in quality assurance as well as for research and development. Lure slips are the tapered cone that connect a plunger to a needle in a syringe, like those used in a vaccine. Misconnection or alignment from the plunger to the needle would result in the wrong amount of vaccine being released into a patient. ISO 80369 was established to test this connection. Instron's axial test systems can be mounted with an optional torsion add-on, or the biaxial electropulse system can be used to complete these tests. The axial universal test systems are designed to be flexible and, and ooh, excuse me, provide a flexible and expandable solution. Many products that are used in the delivery of medicine or for respiratory devices require internal pressure and flow rate measurements in conjunction with the mechanical testing. External devices like flow rate meters and pressure transducers can easily be added to an existing system, providing a new level of diagnostic capabilities. Once a viable vaccine is able to be mass produced, pharmaceutical companies will need to distribute it on an unprecedented scale. Auto injectors, like the EpiPen, provide a convenient and patient-friendly method to deliver the vaccine without the need for physician supervision. Evaluating the functionality of these devices in accordance with ISO 11608 can be done with Instron's integrated auto injector system determining ejection volume, ejection time, 
needle length, and much more. We also have pictured here medical gloves. These are made of materials such as latex, nitrile, and vinyl. Medical manufacturers are required to test the strength of new gloves, but also the strength of gloves that have undergone accelerated aging to determine the shelf life of the glove. It is critical that when a healthcare, healthcare provider picks up a glove to put on, it doesn't break as they stretch it over their hands. Standards such as ISO 11193 and ASTM D6319 can be used to meet Tests can be met with Instron's universal testing machine and non-contacting -contact, video extensometers to measure the strain. The integrity of medical packaging is often evaluated with equal attention and rigor as the medical device itself. The packaging is the container for the device or product, and it needs to contain and protect what's inside so that the quality of the product is not altered during transport. Healthcare facilities around the world are desperate for supplies. But if the masks that arrive have been punctured or the ventilator tubing compromised, they are unusable. Equally devastating would be if a healthcare worker damaged a necessary syringe because the force required to break the seal on the package was too high. One of the most common standards is ASTM F88-09. This is used to determine the seal strength of a flexible barrier in packaging. Measuring the seal allows packaging labs to quantitate their packaging process and make adjustments as necessary. These tests and many others like them are critical in today's fight. Instron recently sent universal testing equipment directly to hospitals who needed to evaluate the quality of new medical glove suppliers before distributing to their hospital staff. Systems are being purchased by 3D printing companies who are partnering with governments to design, validate, and produce PPE face shields, and patient sampling swabs on record timelines. Current customers are repurposing their Instron systems, previously used to test wipes, and now using them to test face, face mask material. The mechanical test frame, load cells, and fixtures are not the only critical parts of a test. The software and chosen calculations are equally important. Our Blue Hill Universal software package comes standard with an application module including test methods with an asterisk listed here. This allows our customers a quick start and the confidence that they are testing in alignment with the correct standards. As the leading global manufacturer of testing equipment, our product line includes universal, most of the examples I've shared today, dynamic fatigue, impact, rheology, and automated test systems. A single piece of equipment can meet a variety of testing needs. We have a full catalog of transducers, load cells, accessories, software packages, and custom fixtures, which can be integrated or exchanged on a standard frame. We offer a full suite of automation options, ranging from an XY table to a full robot system. Instron's wide portfolio is actively supporting all essential businesses, not only biomedical and pharmaceutical. For example, our high capacity frames are used to test rubber and tires for emergency response vehicles and still used to build new healthcare facilities. Additionally, Instron's equipment is used in the manufacturing of paper products, microelectronics, semiconductors, food safety, transportation, and government labs, all of which are essential during the COVID-19 pandemic. Today, there are emergency manufacturers rising to the COVID-19 challenge all over the world. Instron recognizes the unique challenges these manufacturers are facing, and we're here to help you. Navigating the process from new product through to production and sale can be a tricky and confusing pathway to navigate. We have thousands of years of engineering experience in-house and the resources to help you identify standard and custom solutions for your testing needs. Our application experts and test lab are available to you to help you determine what standards, what test methods, what equipment, what fixtures, what software is necessary to get your new job done and meet the regular, regular, regulatory requirements to get your products into the battlefield. We routinely receive samples from our customers to evaluate so that we can propose the appropriate equipment configuration and solutions for your testing needs. In a world of travel restrictions, 
We are glad to have resources local to our customers. We have sales and service in more than 120 countries with experts in material testing who speak over 40 languages. We are also leveraging remote conversations and demonstrations with Skype, Teams, Zoom, and any other communication tool you want to use, including the traditional phone or email. If you're looking for assistance, you can easily contact us through our website or email us at web at or contact your local sales or service representative. We are all here for you and looking forward to partnering with you to win this fight against COVID-19. With that, I would like to introduce you to Landon Goldfarb, our applications expert. He's been listening to your questions or reading your questions throughout the webinar and would now like to share some highlights with us. Thank you, Anna. Um, I have compiled a few questions that I think will have the most relevance to the audience at large. Um, so first question, with the FDA fast tracking, many medical devices and PPE developed to fight the spread of COVID-19, does that mean time intensive validation procedures are still need to still need to be performed for all new systems and software? So just recently, the FDA enacted what's called the Emergency Use Authorization Authority, which essentially allows manufacturers of medical products or alternative uses of products for medical use to apply for what's called an Emergency Use Authorization or an EAU. Uh, this is not the first time this has been done. They have done this when there have been other health scares um, for this nation. So H1N1 Zika, this has also been authorized. Essentially under an EAU, most of the 21 CFR Part 820 quality system regulation requirements, which includes basically all the validation procedures for test equipment, can be waived for the entire duration of the EAU. Um, this is something that you should definitely refer to your compliance officer to ensure that you're properly adhering to this policy. Uh, but it is something that allows manufacturers to get products out the door um, with less restrictions than under normal circumstances. Um, so the second question, does Instron offer any testing services like a contract test lab? Unfortunately, our application lab is designed to be purely informational. Uh, the equipment in the lab is not regularly serviced enough to meet the strict requirements that is required for contract test labs. Our team provides free of charge service to work with customers to evaluate their products and recommend standard custom solutions uh, to get the results that they need. We also leverage uh, the knowledge that we have from years of working within the industry to inform customers what are the best practices to testing to certain standards or developing a test method within Blue Health. Uh, so the last question that I think is extremely relevant, so this is from someone who said, we have had to ramp up production uh, of plastics for the manufacturer of face masks with the need to now test 100 or so specimens a day. Are there any easy ways to increase throughput in the short term? Uh, so from what I've seen, typically the most time consuming parts of testing are data entry and specimen measurement. Unfortunately, these are also generally the most operator prone, um, error prone for operators, excuse me. Uh, so rather than manually entering specimen and batch data into Blue Hill, uh, you can actually use a barcode scanner to input data into a text field. Most barcode scanners are basically plug and play with no setup required. Uh, they have a USB attachment that would go into the PC and they will should work instantly. Um, specimen measurement typically is done with calipers and this can be really time consuming, especially because there are certain plastics metal standards that require an average width or thickness measured along multiple points along a specimen. So this means an operator has to measure each of these points, write down that number, put it in a calculator, find the average, and then input that into Blue Hill. So there are a lot of points in that process where there could be an error in inputting the data. So Instron offers what's called an automatic specimen measurement device or ASMD, which will actually automatically input the measurements into the software. Uh, essentially, once you measure the specimen with the caliper, uh, you click a button and that measurement goes directly into the software and then fills into the width and thickness measurement. You even have the ability to set the number of measurements you want to take for each width or thickness, and then if you want to find the average, you want to find the maximum, min, all of that is going to be 
standard dependent, um, but it's all things that are operator selected within the software. Um, so I think those two are really quick ways to really ramp up uh, production and lower th and increase throughput um, in a short-term solution. Um, all, any other questions that we receive, uh, I will be able to answer offline and send emails to um, the relevant party. All right, uh, thanks for that, Landon. You were, that was all the questions, right? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so that's gonna do it for today. Uh, just a few quick notes before we wrap things up. We're gonna make the recording from today available on our YouTube channel in just a short little while. Uh, next week, I'm gonna be joined by Ian McIntaggart, who's worked with Instron for over 40 years and is really one of the leading composite testing experts in the industry. Uh, he's an absolute wealth of knowledge, so he's gonna be talking all about composite laminates. Um, you can find a link to sign up now on instron.com. Uh, with that said, I just wanna thank Anna for joining us today. Uh, Landon, thank you for being here to respond to questions. And thank all of you for attending. Stay healthy, everyone. We hope to see you again next week. Thanks, Nick.